Hello, everybody. Welcome again to the Cosmic Revolution channel. I'm Maddie, aka Mad Juice, and welcome to the talk on the astrology for the week of June 15th. I'm warning everyone, Mercury is going retrograde this week, so I can already feel my words are hard. <laughs> So we're going to break down for you, and this is your like 10, 15 minute energy report for the week. This is your astral weather, your emotional weather. You can plan accordingly, hopefully using this in really digestible, accessible language. Um, and I'm going to give you the moon breakdown for the week so you can understand your core emotional self and like those nuance points, and then some of the bigger things we have coming up, including more retrograde realness being added to the equation. And of course, the solar eclipse, AKA ring of fire eclipse coming up this weekend. So let's get into it. This weekend, um, looking at my notes, I literally just wrote, welcome to in our feels. We live here now, we live in our feels. There's a lot of emotions going around, we are in, an ocean of emotion um, that was really activated last week from the um, you know Mars conjunct Pisces and sorry Mars conjunct Neptune see I told you that Mercury retrograde the mouth is weird Mars conjunct Neptune last week literally activated like our inner emotional spiritual um, subconscious self feeling really activated and wanting to take action. And sometimes people consider spiritual work inner work, which it is. But last week really proved to us that it also needs to be outer work and we need to have a forward motion. With um, We're doing our inner work to transform ourselves and our lives. But then there's also a call to action. But sometimes because of all that Neptunian, all that Pisces energy, Mars being in the sign of Pisces, it can feel kind of foggy and cloudy. Like I want to take action, but I don't totally know what that means or what that looks like, right? So that was last week. Um, let's talk about you know, the big highlights for this week. Mercury is stationing retrograde in the sign of Cancer um, on Wednesday, June 17th, late in the day. You'll be really feeling the effects of that Thursday, June 18th. The sun is finally leading the hard aspect of squaring Mars. That has gone on since the end of May, and that is where all this tension and eruption has come from, which is obviously very necessary. Um, the sun being in Gemini, Mars being the sign of Pisces, it was like a spiritual eruption. Something below the surface was coming up. There was anger, agitation, frustration. You've heard me say this in my other videos, and um, things were spread heading fast. That's Mars and Pisces, right? So um, that's why the emotional intensity has been like just nonstop for the past few weeks. So that leaving the square of Pisces, square of Pisces, I cannot talk right now. The square of Mars and the sun leaving that hard aspect this week, I think is going to create a little bit more breathing room, but can also create, you know when you were a little kid and you had a temper tantrum or you were really like agitated and in, in a state and almost the anger, um, frustration, your temper was fueling you to a certain end spot. And then once you got that out of your system, then came like the tears because you were just like tired. It's like, I'm just tired. And that's why I also was upset and being upset made me more tired. And it's kind of like the softer, maybe more like sad, emotional release after. That's what we're going to be going through this week. Are you excited yet or what? So um, obviously we also have the eclipses at the end of the week. So I'm going to go over that in a second. But I want to do the moon mapping for the week. I'm still playing around with the formatting here. So you let me know how you like um, to get these astro energy reports. Let me know what's the most important things to you. I'm trying to give you some of the micro astrology, like the moon info with some of the bigger transits, um, retrogrades, eclipses happening, but still keep it not too like in the nitty gritty astro mumbo jumbo because I know it can be hard to follow. 
So for the moon mapping for the week, the moon is going to help us understand our inner self. Those are the more finely points, um, finely nuanced points within us and how we also understand like how to take care of our inner selves because everything going on right now in the world is going to require us to really listen to, nurture, heal, um, empower, engage with, honor our inner worlds. So Monday, June 15th, that's today, we are having moon in Aries. You might feel hot. You might feel like you're ready to go get some shit done. You might be feeling really laser focused. That will go void, of course, at 8.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday. So just expect once the moon goes void, of course, it's no longer action, even in that sign of Aries. It's just um, like the ground is pulled out from underneath us. So that's a great time to do some manifestation work, do some rest, do some journaling. Um, not really time for like the earth plane stuff. Tuesday, June 16th um, and Wednesday, June 17th, we have the waning moon in Taurus. So this is going to be all the signs kind of teach us areas go, go, go. There's a natural flow. After that, the planets want us to, after being hot, going for things, going after things, dropping back dropping down into our body, dropping into our five senses. Um, moon and Taurus could be a great time to plan some self-care, do some yoga, cook yourself a nice meal, spend some time gardening. And then Thursday through Saturday, June 18th through June 20th, the moon will be in Gemini. So we will feel the culmination of Gemini season with the sun in Gemini, the moon in Gemini, just feeling probably a lot of thoughts, maybe downloads, new ideas, a clarity of mind might come during that time. Um, that could be a good time to have any hard discussions or conversations you've been putting off. We'll be very supported. Um, listening, learning during this time, huge. And then of course, Sunday, June 21st, we will have the new moon in Cancer, which is also a solar eclipse at 2.41 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you look if you're interested in learning more about the eclipse, um, we have our Gemini season magazine on sale right now with 100% of the proceeds going to the Black Homeless Trans Women's Fund out of Atlanta. And we are doing a bonus free eclipse season PDF that goes with that because this eclipse season has not just two eclipses like normal, it has three. And you all know I'm a big believer that once we pay attention to the sky, it's almost like honoring this um, consensual agreement that like you remember that you're here and you're bigger than just you and you're held in this divine rhythm. Once you do that, I think it's inherently rewarded. And astrology is just here to amplify what our energy is. So if you're going into eclipse season, confused, stressed, anxious, angry, depressed, frustrated, then yeah, the eclipses will magnify that. But if you take your power back, look to the skies, you're already doing it if you're watching this video, so congrats. Then the energy that can be magnified can be that of illumination, that of healing, that of transcendence, transformation, compassion, justice, peace, love. You see where I'm going with this? Eclipse season is high time to pay attention to the energetic rhythms and also to you know yourself do some mindset work do some spiritual practices do some embodiment work and um, we, we cover all that in our gemini season guide and our eclipse season guide if you want more info so um you know let's focus on that wednesday thursday energy here Ooh, we have mercury stationing retrograde so stationing retrograde is going to be um, I'm going to do a whole separate follow-up series on what Mercury retrograde is, what it means in the sign of cancer, and what it means in terms of you do's and don'ts for your sign and your messages for this retrograde cycle. But just on the very surface level, quick for the week ahead, just know it's going to bring on an onslaught of feelings. And Mercury um, and cancer, I also should point out, you know, cancer is that crap that has that shell. So, um, and it also moves side to side, the crab versus heading like things direct on, facing things in a direct way. So I would say being mindful, just the shadow energy of that, be mindful of being defensive and be mindful of being passive aggressive. If something's upsetting you, just say it face on. 
Um, we're all learning a lot about communications. We're all learning a lot about the world right now. It's okay to mess up. It's just um, important to take accountability for that, right? And try and do better next time. So Mercury and Cancer also, I would just, it's like Mercury is thoughts, communication, cognition, and Cancer really relies on like the feeling, the sensing in of things. And they don't always go together um, in terms of like words can be hard to find, but you can feel stuff in your body. So this is why I love reading. Reading helps me find words for things that um, are new to me. Music, the same thing. Poetry, the same thing. This could be a good time to do that and a good time to just be a little bit slower with your words. Um, I see like Moon and Mercury are going to be conjunct because they're both going to be in Cancer for the large, like for basically all of cancer season. Um, so I want you to think about, there's gonna be an energy during this time. Moon and Mercury are very fast moving planets and luminaries, and they're a little bit like unsteady. They're very emotional, you know? So we just wanna think before we talk because there could be something, something comes up and you just say that first thing in your mind and you're almost regretting it as the words are coming out of your mouth that's the energy that we're stepping into like later this week um so let's see what else do we need to know okay um oh something fun is we'll be in the last full week of venus retrograde so as mercury enters the party venus is leaving so this is going to be our last week and retrogrades are usually split into kind of like three chapters the beginning we learn the lesson what is this venus retrograde retrograde going to be about for us and then that started around um may 13th so think about may 13th to about like end of may what were the lessons you were learning what was the theme then it gave us to like the beginning of june end of may to actually work on those lessons and bring them forward and manifest them into the airplane and to confront them and deal with them so what are some of your lessons from that time and then it gives us this last week or two to integrate and to review and really figure out like, okay, you know, Venus won't go retrograde for another two years. So what am I learning now that will set me up to be more aligned with my inner values, to communicate better about what I need in terms of love and to just understand Gemini, the other person in the equation of love, whether that's romantic, familial love, or I like to think about it as our collective love too, our collective, like, neighborly love that's gemini right okay so we have that and then the last thing that i just want to talk about is sunday june 21st is a very um rare like you know there's this three eclipse cycle pattern happening um so this is going to be a part of that rare eclipse cycle and this is going to be a solar eclipse which is essentially a new moon on steroids a new moon on turbo loaded energy. And um, so on Sunday, I want us to watch out for bottled up feelings could come out like a tidal wave. Um, there can be eclipses always bring surprises. So some revealing information can come out either on the collective or in your interpersonal relationships. Um, and the Cancer New Moon, we've been going through eclipses in the Cancer Capricorn axis since July 2018. So we're kind of ending the cycle of like, what have we learned since 2018 about family? What does home mean to us? What does it mean to take care of ourselves and others? And what are we leaving behind from this really um, Capricorn kind of centric world that we live in? Capricorn being really about structure, tradition. What are we leaving behind in that? Probably a lot, but that's really for you um, to decide because like I said, everyone, you're in control of your own energy and that's really going to affect what's happening during this eclipse cycle, especially for the collective. Um, that eclipse is rare. It's going to be at zero degrees cancer. Cancer is a cardinal sign, which already means an initiation, a new beginning. And cancer being associated with the divine feminine, rebirth, the womb space. I see that. My prediction is we are going to go through a major rebirth during that. Um, we've been going through a lot of changes as a society, but that moon Mercury moment, moon rebirth of our energetic selves, our like inner child, the moon's already like our big cosmic mama. And then Mercury, it's like we're going to be going through a rebirth of thought 
and a rebirth of just mindset um, communication. So some people might be catching up to things, learning at a rapid pace, but that is absolutely a rebirth moment. And this lunar solar eclipse is called the ring of fire eclipse. Um, it's going to be mostly over like India, China, that part of the world. So I'm also curious if something happens in that part of the world that comes up, unexpected news, a revelation, their own rebirth. But this ring of fire eclipse, we won't see it from the US, but it essentially looks like, um, like a ring light, lol. Or like the moon is going to be a, a visibly, it looks like it's a little bit smaller than the um, sun. So, you know, we're getting that darking out that happens during the eclipse but then there's a ring of fire around it, which just adds to sort of the, um, the potency of this eclipse. So please believe um, we are in a huge, huge moment. We're in the North Node um, Gemini, the lunar nodes that happened um, you know, a few weeks ago, and we'll be in that for the next three years. And the North Node rules are collective karma. And I do wanna point out that you know, Gemini, it's in Gemini, the sign of the twins. The last time the North Node was in Gemini um, was 2001 to 2003. And that was obviously our post 9-11 world. And what happened 9-11? The twin towers were hit. In this North Node in Gemini, we have um, the killing, the murder of George Floyd set and sparked a collective worldwide revolution. Where did that happen? In the Twin Cities. So there's just this interesting um, societal karmic rebirth we're going through right now. Um, and I just think that's fascinating to point out those connections. Um, we're in some really potent astrology and it's not letting up anytime soon. Um, end of July, we're going to be in the Mars shadow period before Mars goes retrograde. Mars will be going retrograde September 9th. Um, we're going to have Saturn, it's going to be back into Aquarius in July. Like the summer is still, the gas pedal is not being let up, let's just say, in this energy. The universe wants us to transform and transcend and transmute. And we're getting this like portal energy to go through right now. So just, I want everyone to remember, we are rebuilding our nation, our society right now, but we're also rebuilding ourselves. So take time to do your inner work. I promise you this work is worth it. It is the ultimate work, okay? Astrology is just this tool to remember that we're part of this bigger pattern and this bigger cycle and that we are held and fed by the same energy that keeps the moon in place, the sun in place, that keeps us um, in rotation, that keeps, you know, the trees blooming and the earth shifting so that don't feel like you're small and don't feel like you're alone in this process, okay? You are very powerful, you are very held, and you are here for a reason, right? Okay, so there's literally so much more I can talk about. Um, I'm gonna wrap it up there. And I want us to think about, I will talk about this more um, in my other follow-up videos, but this Mercury retrograde in Cancer, Cancer is very nostalgic. Um, for the past, but also wants to build something like a home for the future, for their children, for the other generations. And we have that is opposite Capricorn, which is very held on to the past, very much associated with time and karma. And Mercury retrograde in Cancer is going to ask us, like, what do we want to take into the future? What are we doing? You know, how can our action be rooted in compassion and nurturing for everyone? you know, so that we can move forward and just achieve so much more than we would than if we were just holding certain people um, in oppression. And I think that this Mercury retrograde in cancer is going to bring some releasing of a lot of things from the past. We're already seeing it with a lot of the statues um, from the Confederacy being torn down here in the U.S. That is very Mercury retrograde in cancer, like shadow. It's kind of like looking back and like, some stuff not coming with us through the next cycle, not coming with us through that zero degrees cancer eclipse birth canal we're going through. So I ask you to also think about in your life, what's not coming with you, you know, and where are we going? Everyone's talking about the end of times and the apocalypse. And I just keep telling my clients, friends, family, and community to just envision and dream weave and meditate and manifest on 
the revolution and the new earth that's being built, okay? The next 10 years, we're rebuilding everything. So I want us to focus on that and the co-creation, okay? So you've got this. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know what resonated. Let me know your signs. Um, and then stay tuned. Later on, we'll be posting Mercury Retrograde for your Zodiac sign video, okay? So have a lovely week. Stay in your cosmic rhythm. Remember, you are powerful, you are worthy, and you are just mm, here for a reason, okay? So until next time, bye, everyone.